<coughs> All right, good morning. My name is Delia Yemibo, and you're on to another edition of um, A to Z. Sorry, I say A to Z. Export business, uh, export pricing, export costing and pricing. And today we'll be looking at part seven, and we are still discussing Inco terms. We are still discussing Inco terms um, and how they relate to pricing. Ajakai Alibaloy, Bijoke, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. Dese Ekinado. Thank you very much for joining. Good morning. You're welcome. We started this conversation some few days ago discussing export pricing and costing. And I talk about the fact that export pricing and costing is a challenge for many. Many tends to many have challenges actually being able to understand the detail of how this works or how this should play out. Talking about export pricing and um, costing because they're coming into the business and they want to know okay, what are the costs I'm going to incur as I plan to export so that I'll be able to, at the end of the day, so I can be able to, at the end of the day, minimize those costs and then be able to maximize profit, of course. You know, so that, that's, um, that's what this is all about. We started discussing this for a while now. Like I said, we're in part seven, so we already have six episodes. <laughs> we already have six episodes. Um, we finished some series in the past. We started with transition from um, speed employment to self-employment in the export business. Then we discussed transition from local production to global consumption. Then we discussed A to Z of export business financing. And then now we are discussing export costing and pricing. Uh, and we're in part seven. <clears throat> the longest in the series was A to Z of export business financing. And we had part one to 20. All right, so we'll continue from where we stopped last night. Last night we were discussing Incotem. And Incotem, like I said, is um, a terms used in international trade to separate transaction costs and risk between buyer and seller, such that at the end of the day, while the good is in transit, the buyer and the seller know exactly who is bearing the risk at that point. And if anything happens, there is no need for argument, there is no need for litigation. We know exactly who has lost money. We know exactly who should have done insurance to be able to protect him herself while the good is in transit. Adinwa Samson, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, you're welcome. And we mentioned all the Inco terms uh, from XWorks to FCA to FAS to FOB to CFR to CIF to CPT to CIP to DAP to DAT and DDP. And by that I mean XWorks, free carrier, free alongside ship, free on board, cost and freight. Cost insurance and freight, carriage pay to, carriage insurance pay to, deliver at place, deliver at terminal, and deliver duty paid. And I talk about the fact that X Works give the highest responsibility and risk to the importer, why DDP, deliver duty pay, give the highest responsibility and risk to the exporter. And we have discussed so far. X works. We have explained what exactly it means in terms of risk and cost and what cost implication it has on your transaction. We have discussed free carrier, the same thing, risk and cost, and where this implication is as on your transaction. We discussed FAS, <coughs> we discussed FOB, <coughs> and last night we also discussed CFR and CIF. So this morning we'll be talking about the remaining five. Having done about uh, six already, we are looking at the last five this morning. So this morning we are looking at CPT, we are looking at CIP, we are looking at DAP, we are looking at DAT, and we are looking at DDP. Olai Wala Biodun, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, you're welcome. All right, so CPT is carriage pay to. Now, yesterday I was analyzing how this affects pricing, and I talked about, I was using a figure for the product we shipped to the UK. And for those of you that are just joining us, this is the product I was using as an example, and this is PAP Ogi. This is the product we shipped to the UK, and I was using as an example yesterday in my analysis. And I was talking about the fact that uh, we ship this product to UK, 34 pounds per carton CFR. And I said, if I do X works, 
it will be about 25 pounds. If we are doing FCA, it will be about 27 pounds. If we are doing FAS, it will be about 29 pounds. If we are doing FOB, it will be about um, 31 pounds. And for CFR, about 34 pounds. Now, we are discussing CPT this morning. Remember, Incoterm has monomodal and multimodal. Monomodal and multimodal. The one we have discussed so far, X works is multimodal. Multimodal means that if I have a contract that have X works, that means the exporter can ship by all different means of transport except by C. Uh, FCA is also multimodal. The exporter can ship through different means of transport except by C. FAS, it is monomodal. The shipment has to be by C. FOB is monomodal. The shipment has to be by C. CFR is monomoda, the shipment has to be by C. CIF is monomoda, the shipment has to be by C. But CPT is multimoda, the shipment has to be by different other transport apart from C. Now, how does CPT work? You know, when I was discussing FCA yesterday, I talked about the fact that in FCA, I move the goods from my warehouse and I deliver it to a container terminal. Container terminal like Lilipon container terminal at Ijora. So if I'm going to do CPT, I'm also going to deliver to an airline terminal, a railway terminal, a truck terminal. So let's say I'm shipping by air. If I'm shipping by air because now it's CPT, I'm not going to deliver to the airline. I'm going to deliver to the uh, on board the airline or at the tarmac. I'm going to deliver to a terminal, a terminal where the airline receives its goods. So in this case in Nigeria, I'll be looking at the terminal somewhere in, a, uh, somewhere in, uh, in Keja, that's NACO Export Terminal, NACO Export Terminal along Airport Road, Nisolo in Apapa, NACO Export Terminal, NACO Export Terminal. That's what I'll be looking at in this case. Olawuwo, Samuel, Oladayo, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, you're welcome. Uh, Charles Okafor, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, you are welcome. Dimeji Bakari, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, you're welcome. Um, so, in CPT, I'm going to now move the goods to my the terminal. Now, look at this. If I'm shipping by air and I'm doing FCA, free carrier, I'm going to deliver to the same location. But my risk and cost will end immediately I deliver the goods to British Airways, Virgin, uh, Emirates, Etihad, Qatar. As soon as I deliver the goods to those airlines, my uh, to deliver the goods, sorry, to the terminal of those airlines, my risk and cost has ended under FCA. And that was why our cost under FCA. For the carton of pap being shipped to the UK is 27 pounds per carton. 27 pounds per carton. In this case, I'm going to deliver to the same point, FCA, but my risk is ending there, but my cost is not ending there. In FCA, my risk and cost end immediately I deliver that goods to Narco Export ter Terminal. But in CPT, my risk will end when I deliver to that place, but my cost extends to destination. My cost extends to destination. So my price will not be £27, as in the case of FCA. My price will be more than £27, maybe about £30 per carton. Why? Because I'm now incurring the cost of shipment to the destination. I'm incurring the cost of shipment to the destination. I'm incurring the cost of shipment to the destination. So my cost, my price will now be something like 30 pounds per carton, CPT Hitro Airport. Remember the way we name, uh, the, the way we are to quote price or prices using Incoterm, on a contract, on an invoice, on a performer invoice, you must quote the price, the unit of measurement of that price, the Incoterm, and the place or port where the cost of the exporter ends. 
and the place or port where the cost of the exporter ends and the place or port where the cost of the exporter ends so my price again 30 pounds per carton cpt Heathrow Airport CPT Heathrow Airport CPT Heathrow Airport Why? Because I am looking at it from the CPT perspective, not FCA perspective Now, clearly something should be clear to you now That FCA, sorry, FOB, CFR and CIF the risk of the exporter end at the same point, but their cost varies. In FOB, the exporter ends at that point, exporter cost end at that point, and that is on board the vessel for FOB. For CFR, the exporter's cost ends not at that point, it's at the destination because the exporter is incurring the cost of shipment to destination. That's for CFR. Then for CIF, the exporter's cost ends at the destination, but the exporter's cost is now two. In CIFR, the exporter's cost to destination is only freight, transport cost. But in CIF, the exporter's cost to destination is freight plus insurance. So, mathematically, CFR is equal to FOB plus freight. CIF is equal to CFR plus insurance or FOB plus freight plus insurance. FOB plus freight plus insurance. Remember, FOB is the value of the goods plus profit plus transport, making it CFR, plus insurance, making it CIF. The same thing for CPT. In CPT, CPT is actually an equivalent of CFR. The real difference between CPT and CFR is, number one, they are used for different mode of shipment. CPT is multimodal. CFR is monomodal. But the similarity between them is the fact that both of them involve exporter bearing the cost of the goods from the port of loading to the port of discharge. Exporter bearing the cost of the goods from the port of loading to the port of discharge. The similarity between them. The difference between them. The similarity between them, exporter bearing the cost of transport of the goods from loading to discharge. The difference between them. Exporter's risk. Exporter's uh, risk for, for CFR ends on board the vessel, on board the vessel, on top of the vessel, at the point of loading. But that of the um, CPT, the risk ends when I deliver it to NACO export terminal. NACO export terminal. It's not going to be on the ship yet. On the L, um, on the, it's not going to be on the ship yet. Sorry, on the plane yet. It's going to be at the export terminal. Of the airline. In this case, in Nigeria, it's called the NACO Export Terminal, somewhere there at the airport. NACO Export Terminal, somewhere there at the airport. And that's for the CPT. So, CPT is similar to CFR in the sense that both involve exporter incurring the cost of transport to the destination, but they are different in the sense that where the risk, and, risk ends are different. And the fact that one is monomodal, one is multimodal. Ade Shewon Ade Wale, thank you very much for joining. Shewon Mafa, thank you very much for joining. Ade Shewon Ade Wale, um, I hope you're following because you requested for this topic when we're discussing finance and we started, we're on part seven now. So if you check the video, uh, you will be able to see the, so if you check the, my timeline rather, or YouTube, you'll be able to see some of the previous videos. Uh, that we have discussed. That's part one to part six of the export costing and pricing. Export costing and pricing. Export costing and pricing. All right. So now let's move on to CIP now. CIP. CIP. CPT, then CIP. CIP is, deep, is similar to CI, CIF. The difference is also the fact that CPT is multimodal. I can use it via air, via road, via rail. Uh, but CIF is monomodal. I can only use it by C. The diff another difference is that the risk of CPT ends at the export terminal. 
at the airline export terminal. In this case, the uh, NACO export station or NACO export terminal on, uh, at the airport. But in the case of CIF, it will end at the onboard the vessel at the port of loading. On board the vessel, on top of the vessel, at the port of loading. On board the vessel, at the port of loading. Another similarity between them is that, a similarity between them rather is that, they both incur, in both cases, extra incurs the cost of freight to destination, transport cost to destination. Number two, extra incur the cost of insurance to destination. Marine insurance. Extra incur the cost of insurance to destination. Marine insurance. Marine insurance. The cost of insurance to destination. Esther incurred the cost of insurance to destination. And that is the marine insurance. Marine insurance to destination. That is incurred by the exporter. Ima Okon. Thank you very much for joining. Good morning. You're welcome. So, my price now is not going to be 30 again. It's not going to be around... My price is thirty-two pounds per carton. CIP Heathrow Airport. Thirty-two pounds per carton. CIP Heathrow Airport. This is the way I'm going to quote it on my contract. This is where I'm going to quote it on my uh, um, pro forma invoice. Someone said, "What product?" What product you export? No, I export different products, but I mean, this one of the products I export, if you are interested, this is Ogi, PAP. This has been exported to the UK for the last two years. We'll be exporting this to the UK. We we'll export a couple of products. We export products, a lot of products are not ours. We do what we call cooperative export, working with Nigerian SMEs, manufacturers, shipping their goods together. The essence of this program is to get you interested, number one, to work with you to develop your product, number two, and to work with you to export that product, number three. So, Sheomafa, I hope I've answered your question. We export different products, both commodities and finished products, but this program is mainly on finished products. I don't want to talk about commodity here at all. Why? Because commodity is not... If you are coming in newly at this time, you are too late for commodity. Don't bother about commodity. The price is high. You need to do a lot of work to be able to do it. The cost is high. The risk is high. But more importantly for me is that it's keeping us in modern slavery. Commodity export is keeping Nigeria, Africa in modern slavery. The more we focus on commodity export, the more we remain in modern slavery. The more we focus on commodity export, the more we remain in modern slavery. We are just going to be exporting jobs and importing poverty. When you export commodity, you export jobs and you import poverty. So I don't want to talk about commodity. I want to talk about finished product. And this is one of the finished products we export. And quite a number of other products we work together with other people to export out of Nigeria. All right, let's move on to the next one. And that is Incotan DAP. Incotan DAP. Deliver at place. Deliver at place. Deliver at place. Deliver at place is all the D series are very interesting in Kotem. The risk and cost is no longer in the exporter's country. The risk and cost has passed over the air, over the sea. Now it's ending in the importer's country. The risk and cost up until now for the E series, the F series, the C series, all ended in the exporter's country. But for the D series, Deliver series, all the incotam risk and cost ends in the importer's country. Importer's country. So DAP is deliver at place. Deliver at place. What happened in deliver at place? In deliver at place, the exporter risk and cost ends at a place in the importer's country. Remember, in, in CPT and CIP, the exporter risk and cost ends at the airline terminal, NACO export station, NACO export terminal in Nigeria, in Lagos. But if I'm exporting this item again now to UK, the example we've been using since we started, I will be delivering this item to a location, not at the airport, outside the airport. 
outside the airport. For example, the person that we export this thing to, the, 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 the um, um, supermarket is somewhere in Barking, in the UK, somewhere in Barking. So I might have to deliver it to his location in Barking. Or wherever it is, he wanted me to deliver it to. Somewhere outside the airport. Shewin is asking, do you have catalog of products for partnership? Shewin, what kind of partnership are, we, are you asking for? What we do when we partner, we partner with people who have products and we work with them to get market to ship the product. Oh, okay, to ship to the US. Why not? Why not? Okay, I understand what you mean by partnership now. Shewin, if you are in the US, then you are the kind of Nigerian we are looking for. In China, in Dubai, in UK, I deal with Nigeria who are interested like you. So what I can do is, you can drop a message for me on Facebook Messenger. I will chat you, uh, or you can drop your number for me on Facebook Messenger. Then I will drop that list for you. List of products that we have from SMEs in Nigeria. List of products that we have for SMEs in Nigeria. And this product will be one of the products we want to ship to the US. It's already in the US. But of course, it's not in many places in the U.S. We also want to ship it to the U.S. Shewo, I think I've answered your question. All right. Deliver to a place. Deliver to a place. A place outside the port. Deliver to a place. A place outside the port. Deliver to a place. A place outside the port. Deliver to a place. And this time around, my cost will be around maybe 32 pounds per carton. Deliver. Sorry. It will now be... My price will be 32 pounds. Sorry, not 32 pounds now. Maybe 36 pounds. Yes, it will be more than 34 pounds. 36 pounds per carton. DAP back in London. 32 pounds, 36 pounds per carton. DAP back in London. 32 pounds per carton, DAP back in London. 32 pounds per carton, DAP back in London. That would be the price now, 36 pounds per carton. Because I'm not delivering to the airport, I'm delivering outside the airport. Outside the airport. Outside the airport. I'm delivering outside the airport. Now, Look at the difference between DAP and DAT. In DAT, I'm delivering, if I'm shipping by sea also, I would, I would deliver to that country a place in that country. But because DAP, DAT, and DAT are for multimodal, so I won't be able to use it for sea. I'll use it only for air. In DAT, I'm delivering also to a terminal. Okay, Sheung, thank you very much. I've seen your chat. I will chat to you on WhatsApp later today, and I will drop those lists for you. Uh, I'm hoping you'll be able to help work with us to assist small-scale manufacturers in Nigeria who are eagerly looking for market outside Nigeria. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll chat to you later in the day. All right. So, DAT, deliver a terminal. Deliver a terminal. I'm going to deliver to a terminal, an airline terminal. An airline terminal. So if I'm shipping to the UK again, I'm going to deliver into a terminal at Heathrow. Now, now, now. All along, I've been delivering to NACO in Nigeria. Even though in the case of CPT and CIP, I incurred the cost of shipping it to Heathrow Airport. But in this case, I'll be delivering to same a terminal in Heathrow. But I will be delivering it to that terminal and I will be bearing the risk and cost. So you can see the difference between CPT and DAP. Uh, DAT. I will be delivering the risk and cost. Delivering the risk and cost. I'm sorry, bearing the risk and cost rather. So I'm bearing the risk and cost of that goods to the destination. And the destination now is deliver at terminal. Not deliver at a place outside the port. But deliver at terminal. Not deliver at the place outside the port, but deliver at terminal within the port. Deliver at terminal within the port. My cost will not be as high as delivering outside the port. 
So instead of about six pounds that I'm incurring, 36 pounds, I might be incurring now 34 pounds. So my price will be 34 pounds per carton. DAT Hitro London. 34 pounds per carton. DAT Hitro. You must mention a place or port when you are quoting your price. And that's the place or port where your cost end, not risk. Where your cost end. The place or port where your cost end, not risk. The place or port where your cost end, not the risk. And lastly, DDP. Oh, DDP. You know, in, in the pricing, x -Works, in x -Works, in x -Works, importer is bearing the risk and cost from the exporter warehouse to his own country and his own warehouse. In DDP, deliver duty pay, exporter is bearing the risk and cost from his own warehouse, exporter warehouse, to the importer's warehouse, every cost being borne by the exporter. Because the exporter does not just deliver to a place, he will be paying duty. The exporter does not just... So, imagine the exporter is shipped it in the UK saying, I will deliver to his location in Barking, and then I will pay duty. <laughs> I will pay the duty to the British government on his behalf. Of course, my price can be about £40 per carton. DDP Barking. 40 pounds per carton, DDP backing. 40 pounds per carton, DDP backing. And you can see the progression now from the beginning to the end. X works, my risk and cost ends at my warehouse. FCA, my risk and cost ends. At a terminal in Nigeria, airline or shipping line terminal, FAS, my risk and cost end at the ship side while I'm overlooking the vessel. FOB, my risk and cost end on board the vessel at the port of loading. CFR, my risk end on board the vessel at the port of loading. My cost extend to the destination, and that cost is freight charge. CIF, my risk ends. At the port of loading on board the vessel, but my cost extends to the destination, and that will be insurance, transport, and insurance. Freight charge, insurance. CPT, my risk and cost end at a line, at a shipping line, sorry, at an airline terminal in Nigeria. But I'm bearing the cost of transport to destination. CIP, my risk and my, sorry. CPT, my risk end at the terminal in Nigeria, but my cost extends to destination. CIP, my risk end in Nigeria, but my cost extends to destination. In both cases, CPT and CIP, my risk and cost are ending at the terminal. In CPT, CFR and CIF, my risk is ending of body vessel at the port, at the seaport. But in CPT and CIP, my risk and cost ends at the airline terminal. In this case, NACO Airport Terminal. But my cost expense to destination. My cost freight charge, my cost insurance, expense to destination. DAT, my risk and cost end at the importer's country, at a terminal, airline terminal, railway terminal, ro I mean, uh, um, 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 uh, bus, uh, sorry, truck terminal in the importer's country. D, that's, um, DAP at the place. Then DAT, my risk and cost end at the terminal. Airline terminal, railway terminal. So if my risk and cost end at the terminal in the importer's country, that's DAT. If my risk and cost end at a place outside the terminal, that's DAP, deliver at place. DAT, deliver at terminal. My risk and cost end at the terminal of the airline. DAP, deliver at place. My risk and cost end outside the terminal. And then DDP, my risk and cost end at a place at the terminal, but I will also be paying the duty. I will also be paying the duty. I'm literally incurring all the cost for this customer. Yeah, Mr. Taiwo, thank you very much for joining. Friday, Asakpa, thank you very much for joining. Miki Ogbaisi, thank you very much for joining. Bayo Adamola, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Ronke or 
Dead Job B, thank you very much for joining. Good morning, Naemeka Okere, thank you very much for joining. We're running off now, and what we've been discussing is on export business, export business costing and pricing part seven. And today we have looked at Incotan, and this is the second session we had on Incotan. In the evening, we are still going to continue. Remember, we are going to about part 10. We are going to continue. I'm going to be discussing export costing and pricing part 8. Thank you very much for listening again. This is Import Export Platform brought to you by 3 Person Academy. My name remains Delia Amy Ball. See you in the evening and have a good day at work. Thank you very much.